Hi guys, Squall here, and in this video I'm going to show you in 15 minutes or less how to shoot a precision ILS approach in the TBM 930 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. First thing you're going to need before you shoot an ILS approach is an approach plate. These are available from electronic flight bags or online. Places like Sky Vector have them or uh, Navigraph or you can just simply Google them. I'm using this one here, which is Lima Foxtrot Romeo Sierra, which is Nantes Airport in France. And we're going to shoot the ILS Y for runway 03. There is an ILS Z, which is slightly different, but it doesn't matter which one you choose. Now, the important thing is to note that the initial approach fix for runway 3 starts here at dog off. This is our uh, initial fix, and the course inbound is 028. We'll need this stuff in a minute. Dog off, as you can see on the vertical uh, slice, comes in at an altitude of 3,000 feet. So, what we need to do to set ourselves up is we need to get to dog off at 3,000 feet. And if you notice just above, it makes reference to two things, NT and NTS. NT is the actual ILS system, NTS is a VOR, which just happens to be at the airfield. So if you look over here, you can see ILS DME at 109.9, and that is NT. So D14 means this waypoint dog off is 14 nautical miles from the ILS system NT, and it's 15 nautical miles away from the VOR DME system, which is further back in the airfield at 115.5. NTS. We're going to put both of these frequencies into our aircraft so we've got maximum uh, situational awareness. Now what will happen is we will hit dog off at 3000 feet on 028. We will fly along this heading and by 19, sorry, 9.2 DME from the ILS system we'll begin our descent down to the runway. That's where we need to have captured our glide slope. If we don't capture our glide slope we'll have to go missed. Equally we're in hard IFR conditions, as you can see outside. If we can't get to, down to our decision height and see something on the runway, that's the lights or the, uh, the landing, um, the landing touchdown zones, anything like that, then we have to go missed. How do we know what height we need to do this? It's down here. Cat 1, DA, decision altitude, is 273 feet or 200 feet height. Now, in the TBM 930, we can either put the barometric uh, altitude in here, which is 273, or we also have a radio altimeter which hits the ground directly and that's a height above ground of 200 feet. We'll use the 273 just to keep it simple. But you need to have this approach plate uh, to hand so that you can punch in, um, this, punch it in for whatever runway you want. So let's jump in the aircraft and set this up. I'll leave the approach chart on the screen while we do this so that you've got it there as a reference. What we need to do is we need to set the aircraft up for this approach. Now, at the moment, I've only got the destination in. You might have some waypoints on the way. We know that dog off is a place that we need to go to. There's two ways of doing this. If it was on a long flight, then we might just go to MFD, Procedures, and then we'll select the approach, and then we'll choose ILS 3 Yankee, which is the uh, approach that we want. We choose the correct transition, which I happen to know is Normie in this one. Uh, otherwise, you have to figure out. Now, Normie's going to be, like, right over here somewhere. We zoom out. It's going to take us way out over here. What I'll do instead is show you the other way of doing it, so we're not going to load that in. If we wanted to load that in, we would choose Normie and then choose Load or Load and Activate. Load and Activate will take us straight to Normie, but you can see the waypoints are going to take us to dog off anyway. So what we're going to do instead is we're not going to load that, we're going to do it a different way. So in the flight plan, I'm going to add dog off, D-O-G-O-V, as our current, as our next waypoint, and now you can see it's route in left towards dog off. It's going to get there very quickly because uh, this plane flies quickly. I'm just going to slow it down a little bit so I can I can talk to you guys. Uh, we'll need to descend fairly soon. We could see that um, it is currently 51 nautical away, so no immediate rush. We're now heading towards dog off, which was on the chart our initial approach fix. So let's set some other things up. Go to the PFD, and we need to set a couple of things up here. One thing to make a note of is click on speed bugs and you'll notice the approach speed is 85 knots. So when we're going down on that glide slope, what we're looking to be is fully configured, which means landing gear down, flaps in, in landing position, 85 knots and stable. That's where we want to be on that glide slope. So keep a, a record of that. Our minimums, we need to punch in now. Now on this plane, we, we have, if you click here, we have the barrow and the radio. The barrow is the barometric pressure minimum. 
and the radio altimeter literally measures the distance to our ground. On the chart it showed both, it showed 200 feet for the radio altimeter and 273 for the barometric. So we'll click barometric and put 273, enter, and that will activate, you see barrel 273, that will activate on the display screen here, barrel 273, so we know what our minimum is. If we don't see the runway by then, uh, the lighting or the touchdowns or anything like that, if we don't see the runway, we need to go and missed. Now, we need to set up the uh, the actual main screen, so if we jump over to here, uh, what we need to set up is a couple of navigational aids. Remember, we've got the ILS and we've also got that VOR DME, so we need to punch both of those frequencies in. So down here again, click on NAVCOM and then click Audio and Radios down here. That's going to give us our uh, NAV aids, NAV1, NAV2. If you don't see that, just scroll up with this wheel here. What we want to do is we want to get the ILS into the NAV1 frequency. So we click on that, do 109 decimal 9 hit transfer, that will put it into the active in the white. Then on NAV2, we're going to put in the VOR DME, which is 115 decimal 5. Again, hit transfer, that will put it immediately into the active. Now we've got those two things in. If we then jump back over here, right, I need to start descending now, so we need to start uh, putting that 3,000 feet in going to back off, hit the V-speed and descend downwards so that we pick up dog off correctly because we're only 14 nautical away. Uh, what we want is we want to display those things on here. So we'll click PFD settings and then we've got bearing 1 and bearing 2. Now in bearing 2 we want the VOR DME so we'll click it until it says NAV2 because we put that into the NAV2 frequency and you can see it's got it now. 25 nautical away NTS which is correct. That was the uh, VOR DME. If we put bearing 1 onto nav 1, that will say NT. It's now picking up the uh, frequency for the ILS system, 23 nautical away. And then if you click other PFD settings and then go to wind, and then option 3, I highly recommend you have that on so you can see what the wind's doing. We may have a slight crosswind. Actually, no, it's going to be more or less down the nose. Uh, so click back, click back again. That is now set up. One thing we do need to do though is we need to just check our course inbound on the ILS. So in order to do that we need to apply the course and, and configure it for uh, NAV1. Before we do that we need to click on synchronize heading which synchronizes the heading bug so push that button in. Click on heading for a second so that you can switch this to lock 1 which is the NAV1 and you can see the course has been selected as 0 to 8. If it wasn't on 0 to 8 you would turn this course knob here until it says 028. We're now going to leave that turned in because we want the system to fly the localizer because it's picked it up, it says lock one. We need that needle to come across. But if we now click it back into nav mode, what it's going to do, instead of following the GPS, it's now going to try and intercept the localizer that we want. That is the one that initial fix is at dog off. So it's going to try and fly a 028 course inbound on the ILS system using that localizer when it comes back in, which it should soon, if it doesn't go crazy. Looks like it's going a bit crazy to me, but hey, welcome to Microsoft Flight Simulator. <laughs> uh, what, what we could have done is just fly the, uh, the heading. If we just go heading mode for a second, this is the way to do it manually, by the way. What you're trying to do is trying to get that green line to start moving across. When it moves across, hit the nav button and it'll fly down that localizer. So I'll speed it up until we get to that point. There you go, needles coming across, we hit the nav button. That should now turn us onto that course. Notice I kept the speed down into flap speed, so now I can engage flaps one. And then you might need to give it a little bit of throttle just to keep this speed up. Now what it's done is turned onto that localizer on a course of 028. That's not captured the glide slope, that's just captured our horizontal positioning, if you like. So if we go back to the MFD, we can now zoom that in. And you can see it's now flying that 028 and it is localized. It says lock in green, so it's on the localizer. We're now in flaps one, which is good. It's a good place to be. Now we need to think about capturing the glide slope. Now remember, from that initial approach fix, the distance to the ILS, which was NT, started at 15 DME, and at 10.2 DME, the glide slope was capturable. So now we're on the localizer, we're gonna hit the approach button, and now you can see it's gonna say GS in white, because we're at 3,000 feet, 
it is now looking for the glide slope. And we know from the chart that that should happen at about 9.2 DME on NT. So I'll fast forward and what you should see is this green dot will start to come down. And there it is. So when you've got the, the diamond in the first white dot there, there's two white dots, you want to get the gear down now. So that's going to give you a little bit more resistance. Make sure you stay in the white arc. Remember, in the TBM, you are in charge of the throttle, nothing else. If we have a quick look outside, you can see why we're flying in a precision approach, because we can see, quite literally, nothing right now. Now you're waiting for that green dot to get down to the second point there, and then you want to put the second stage of flaps in, and then you want to get the throttle set so that you've got 85 knots, because that is our... Uh, approach speed and we want to be fully configured so full flaps now you can see the flaps coming down over here on the on the MFD and now I'm gonna adjust my speed I'm gonna bring the throttle back a bit we're looking for about 85 knots if this if the speed comes down just give it more throttle it will pitch for you but what it can't do is it can't adjust the throttle we look outside still can't see a thing but that's okay because we're not at our minimums yet. You can see it's starting to descend. So now it's starting to descend. If you look at the chart, we need to if the missed approach is to climb straight out on the on the heading, runway heading. So we'll bring we'll bring the synchronized bug, click that. That'll put the heading bug for us. So if we need to go missed, we're gonna climb on the heading. And the altitude we're going to put to, it says climb initially to 1,300, then left turn climb to, I think it's 4,000. So we'll put the altitude up to 4,000 now. I'm just going to come back on the throttle a little bit because I've let it overspeed. But you can see we're on the green diamond. You have to keep watching this stuff. So the glide slope is in green, the localizer is in green. It's all captured and we're descending on the glide path. We can even verify this. If you look at the glide path, it says uh, Ospen. Ospen will pass at 4 DME. So when we're at 4 DME, we should be at Ospen. And before that, I think it was GLNDB, it says we'll be at 2,000 feet at 6.2. So 6.2 nautical miles here, we should be at 2,000 feet if we're correctly configured. And I think you'll find that we will be. So I'm going to speed this up now. And you can see on the um, synthetic vision, you can see the runway, but in real life, we can't see very much. We can see a flashing light, but that's not good enough to land. So we'll speed up. Watch for 6.2 DME down the bottom there on NT, and that should be 2,000 feet. Our barometric minimums are 273 feet. If we can't see the runway at this point, we must go missed. But, luckily we can see things. So when do we cancel autopilot? We cancel autopilot generally speaking you could do it now but you might as well leave it fully configured. Fly down to minimums about 300 feet we cancel and land. Okay well we're less than 500 feet we've got good speed we're fully configured at this point Cancel the autopilot, disengage the yaw damper, and fly it in manually. Just remember to keep your speed, look at the crosswind. With the wind as, gluster as blustery as today, you don't want to let your speed drop below 85, so anything towards 90 is good. Gives you a little bit of a buffer just in case the wind shears on you. And that is how you fly a precision ILS approach in the TBM 930 in Microsoft Flight Simulator. Give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video guys, don't forget to sub for more content.